I'm Shashank Sharma. I am an application engineer in the Munich office of MathWorks. And actually, today I am presenting on behalf of my colleague YJ, who unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, yeah, so before I start, I would like to uh, say that MathWorks is a sponsor of Open Robotics, as well as member of Ross Industrial Consortium. And I'm very happy to be here and present how you can bridge Ross with MATLAB and Simulink. So uh, before I start, just I wanted to know, uh, is everybody, how many are familiar with MATLAB and Simulink in general here? Oh, quite a lot. And how many are you using uh, MATLAB and Simulink for projects? Really? Oh, OK. Great. <laughs> so that's a great number. So let me start with a generic uh, introduction to autonomous systems. And I think most of you are working in this respect, so you know that uh, in an autonomous system, you need to perceive your environment. You need to talk about where you are in the world. You need to plan from your start position to your goal position. And you need to be able to control your actuators. So an example of perception could be uh, deep learning semantic segmentation, automatically defined road pixels from non-road pixels. An example of localization can be a SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. Planning could be, yeah, standard planning application, where a planning uh, algorithm is uh, starting from a start pose to the goal pose. And a state machine controlling the actuators of a car in a 3D engine can constitute as a controls. So these th these are some of the out of the box examples from MATLAB and Simulink, and I'll not go into the detail here. Uh, what I wanted to um, uh, say from this slide is that autonomous systems are complex, and it is important to manage the complexity of autonomous systems. So what happens when you do not do that? So these are some of the examples from DARPA competitions and. These are made by some brilliant researchers, but as you can see that these managing complexity in autonomous systems is, is hard, and it can lead to some funny but disastrous situations. So, so that reply, that, that comes uh, to the point that we, we can say that there are some challenges in autonomous systems development, and one of them is applying the multi-domain expertise. So I can say with the certainty that all of you sitting in the room have different domain expertise and a lot of commonalities, but a lot of differences as well. So this is one of the challenges you need to apply. We need to work together and collaborate. Uh, we need features. Uh, and here, MathWorks and Ross are doing a lot of work, and other companies and other developers as well, to design features that enables you to design complex algorithms. You also need end-to-end -end workflows, preferably in one development environment. Sometimes it's not possible, but you need to reduce the number of the environments that you are interacting in. And you need robot uh, performance evaluation and operation before you start connecting and testing everything on the hardware. And that's where simulation plays a very, very important role. So uh, how does success look like in such a situation? So we saw some of the failures of the robots doing some funny but disastrous situations. And now let's see some of the success. So this is Agile Justin. It was developed by German aerospace centers, uh, and it has a stereoscopic uh, camera and has tactile sensors on the skin to perform human-like tasks. And here it has actually 53 degrees of freedom, and it can do complex uh, maneuver and also catch two balls at the same time. Now let's have a look at another example. This is an Illumi snake. Uh, it is built by a startup based from Norwegian N uh, University, NTNU, and it is an AUV, Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. Its snake-like skin enables it to uh, maneuver underwater at, at a significant distances autonomously and perform subsea inspection. Uh, it can also do uh, a lot of uh, inspection in the confined areas where even humans are, cannot go. So what is the common um, point in those the examples that I just show you? Both were developed uh, using MATLAB and Simulink. 
So MATLAB and Simulink are being used and have the capabilities to enable uh, the al autonomous systems development. And ROS together, uh, it's also doing the same thing. So together, there you have a great, great possibility to leverage the tooling of both these environments and work to solve your problems and bring out new and cool autonomous systems and uh, develop the pace of acceleration of development. So um, this is what my talk is going to be focused on, how you can connect MATLAB and Simulink with ROS. There are different possibilities, and we will go into that in detail. Uh, I have a question regarding my next slide. So if you, uh, how many are aware about model-based design in general? OK. So model-based design, I'll try to explain it very briefly. Model-based design enables you to create one model and then write from the requirements to system architecture to your component design and implementation till verification and validation using the same model. And uh, that's the value proposition. And that's what something uh, people who use Simulink uh, really like. And I would come back to it later. This was a slight segue. And why I talk about this is because why, when you use Simulink with ROS, what are some advantages and disadvantages? Uh, now, let's take another example of an autonomous system, a uh, self-driving car. It has some sensors and a perception environment. It has some planning modules. And these planning modules are interacting with the perception modules and also with the controller modules, which are in turn giving some directives to the actuators. And now, ROS is a great communication framework. And ROS has some of the stacks for all these different parts. And uh, you already know how to use it. So this is how currently your workflow might look like. So you might have a simulator and or a hardware uh, which you connect to ROS and ROS2. And you have additionally your some of the software which you are uh, using, like you are putting it as the ROS nodes, and you are doing your workflow. So in addition to your current workflow, you can add on uh, with MathWorks uh, using MATLAB and Simulink. And there are three ways you could do that. So the first is you can read the ROS bag log files and do data analysis and playback of the logged ROS data. The second possibility is you could do desktop prototyping. And uh, you could connect MATLAB live to ROS and ROS2. And the third possibility is you could deploy C or C++ code, uh, no code after code generation as a standalone node. Uh, in your ROS network. And uh, we have different capabilities in controls, perception, uh, planning and decision making, and so forth and so on. And this could be leveraged through these workflows. So my focus will be on the workflow between ROS and ROS2 and not about what other capabilities or features or solution stacks that we have. So let's talk about the first uh, workflow. So data logging. So using uh, ROS, uh, you could read ROS bags into MATLAB directly. Uh, and MATLAB has very good inbuilt support for time series data. So you can directly uh, analyze your time series data by reading in the ROS bag files. Additionally, you could also play back um, ROS bag data into Simulink. So Simulink has its strengths in time-based simulation. So the workflow is a bit different. And since all raw log messages have time stamps, you can play back the data with this time stamps in mind. And we also provide specialized sensor messages types. So for the sensor message, commonly used sensor messages such as images, point clouds, and occupancy maps, you don't need to do any extra post processing. So you could directly import that data, and MATLAB takes care that you get the data it is, uh, as it is in the required format for you. And actually, this is one of the more very common uh, workflow for the customers of ours who are not using ROS in production, but they still want to use ROS 
uh, during the development because ROS has uh, ROS bags are a great way to store data during uh, physical testing. And uh, let me take an example of the car. So if you have uh, if you're doing a lot of tests for self-driving cars, there's loads and loads of data, and um, ROS bags are a great way to store all that data that is timestamped. So one of the user stories for our data analysis workflow is from ClearPaths Robotics. So for the auto robo, robo line, they use MATLAB to analyze and visualize ROS data and prototype algorithms. And as a result, their data analysis time was cut up by up to 50%. The second workflow is desktop simulation for algorithm development. Now, algorithm development uh, components can also be prototyped and evaluated by ROS connection or an external hardware. So uh, MATLAB and Simulink makes a desktop simulation easy with ROS because you can leverage both of the design tools to enable prototyping of new ro uh, robotics algorithm. And because you can make simulatable algorithms in MATLAB and Simulink quite easy, it's very easy to then co-simulate it with Gazebo. So let me dive down a bit into MATLAB-based ROS workflows. So with MATLAB, you can create a ROS network or participate in an existing ROS network. You can then collect data, send, or receive ROS messages. Your algorithm can be processed to schedule the execution of MATLAB code efficiently. And using rate control or ROS rate, you could slow down the control loop based on the ROS master clock. And optionally, you can also visualize the results. <coughs> now, let's take a look at Simulink ROS workflows. So similar to ROS MATLAB desktop setup, um, the workflow looks similar, but since it's in a time-based simulation domain, it looks slightly different. Uh, so we need some components to establish the connections from Simulink to model with ROS. And then we have, uh, so like this, this is uh, where we are getting the data from the ROS. Now we can have our algorithm uh, in the MATLAB in Simulink. Uh, it can run at different rates. And actually, you could also integrate your C code right inside that. So if you have something in C, then it's, you can just call it from Simulink and then carry on your development. And then, of course, you also need to send out the commands for control signal back through the ROS. And there's an optional a visualization step, or you can also debug it. Now the points that are highlighted here, uh, these are, the block, uh, these are the blocks that are available out of the box, and all you need to do is configure which topics you want to receive and which messages you're reading or writing, and that way you don't need to uh, configure anything manually, and with just in like some seconds you could enable it, uh, the enabling the receiving or sending messages to your ROS network. So it's really easy to configure, and it saves a lot of time. Let's take an example. So suppose you have an application layer uh, that does a very simplistic traffic sign recognition and collision avoidance. So the application can look something like this. You have an obstacle avoidance uh, module. You have a simplistic object classifier. And you have a state machine that determines the state and determine, gives out some commands for robot to follow. Now, all you need to do in order to connect it with ROS is to add a communication layer. And here, ROS acts as the main communication framework. So just by adding inbuilt mod, uh, blocks, you could convert your simulating models into the models that can communicate with the ROS framework. Now, this example, when run, it shows that uh, on the right-hand side, we see some uh, the video output and the gazebo co-simulation. 
And on the left-hand side, we see in the real-time desktop simulation uh, which states are we in, some different si signals, and what are the values of the signals in real time. So this is very easy and very helpful when you are analyzing and prototyping through your algorithms so that you know what your code is exactly doing. And then you can find errors early. That enables you to speed up your development. Now, this is also an, another example which, where we are using ROS2 nodes instead of ROS. And uh, giving, uh, shouting a call out from Steven's presentation, so here we are using one of the bridges, so ROS1 bridge, which enables uh, this example. And this is also an out-of-the-box example available for you to download uh, with the toolbox. Now, this brings me to my third point. Uh, how to generate code out of it. So now that you have done, you have implemented your algorithm, you have done multiple iterations, and now you have significant confidence that you might want to try it on a hardware, or you might want to, uh, say, uh, speed up the speed of your simulation. So you can then automatically generate ROS nodes by uh, creating our uh, C, C++ code. We have a long history of uh, code generation with multiple customers, and uh, you could deploy your algorithms then as standalone C and C++ ROS nodes. But what you can additionally do is, once that ROS node is generated, you could start and stop that C or C++ node from MATLAB, and you can also, using the external mode, access the data and tune parameters inside your C and C++ code using Simulink. And of course, you can use ROS to communicate with the node. So an example of this, uh, this is again another shipping example where um, several core components of a sample navigation problem have been broken out into separate nodes to uh, create a distributed system, and then each node is deployed as a ROS node. And this enabled us to uh, speed up the simulation of the same thing, same system of after the code generation. Now, we have another user story for the uh, code generation. So Voyage, it's a Silicon Valley startup company for self-driving cars. They wanted to use uh, Simulink's model predictive controllers for their longitudinal controls. And then they used a ROS toolbox to deploy this controller as a ROS node. Um, and then they generated the source code using the Simulink uh, coder, and then they put it into a Docker container. And as a result, their development speed was tripled. And they could easily integrate everything that they developed using MATLAB and Simulink with their rest of the open source stack. And the Simulink algorithms that they created using the code were used in production software. So concluding remarks, autonomous systems development is not easy. There are lots of challenges. Using model-based design approach and MathWorks and Simulink tools along with ROS enables you to handle the complexity of autonomous systems. There are multiple ways to connect MathWorks with ROS tooling, that is data analysis, uh, desktop simulation, or directly code generation and ROS node deployment. And yeah, so these are the same information. And thanks a lot for listening. And I'll be happy if you have any questions about uh, this presentation, or if you're interested in knowing about other solutions in navigation or robotic manipulation or anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Shashank, for this very interesting talk. So any questions? Yes. yes. Uh, do you have a code generation working for ROS1 or ROS2? Both. So we have uh, for ROS2, uh, we have support for publishers and subscribers at the moment, but uh, we plan to keep on adding more and more support, but uh, we have code generation for both ROS1 and ROS2.